Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 61, the first one of 2013. You're watching two guys really coming off our sugar highs from the holidays. We know you're coming off your sugar high, and wow. Hey, this episode of Anglican Unscripted is being brought to you by Anglican 1000. We've got our first sponsor, George. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And today is January 1st, 2013. George, first story of 2013. Story number one is there is no story. Ah. Okay, guys, this is like the end of August. There's not a lot of news going on. Uh, all the newsmakers are at home wrapping presents, writing little notes, putting out big uh, uh, proclamations like the presiding bishop who put out a nice Christmas letter without mentioning Jesus. Oh, That's not a... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you know. It's not even new. It's not even news. So we can't... story one is Kevin and George making up the news. Well... Not really, but we're going to talk about 2012. And 2012, you know, George and I have sat down and, uh, for about an hour now talking about 2012 and what it means as a big picture issue as a year. And this we kind of need to do every year is to, to, you know, go back and look at some of the big events. And to me, the biggest event of 2012 was that love won out. What, you mean that Rob Bell book? No, I mean that the, the, the 70s culture and the sexual revolution and to say that everything can be identified and judged by love has finally won out. And in that, we as a human race um, have lost our identity and our definition yeah, because I mean we can't define things anymore. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Love won out, but we don't know what love is anymore. <laughs> That's right. We have no sense or understanding of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the General Convention of the Episcopal Church, they, they passed two major issues, major uh, motions. One was gay marriage, and the other was transgender clergy. And both of those were based, as you say, Kevin, on an understanding of love. Well, two people who love each other should get married. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter that uh, God created you male or female. It's what you want to be, what you feel best loved in whatever guise that you choose. That's what is right for you, and therefore it must be right for the world. Love won out because love no longer means anything. It's become infantilized. It really has, because the reality is if, if you lose the ability to identify things as gender, you can't tell male from female, or sin, you can't tell right from wrong, or God, you can't tell um, his creation from culture. Um, when you've lo lost that ability to, to identify and have a definition of, really, that's the stopping point for culture. You, 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 you've come to a place of stop. And right now, I think at the end of 2012, uh, our world culture has slowed down to a stop and really needs to have the church help re-identify these things that are missing. Yeah, and it's not just the United States where we're fighting this battle. You can mm -hmm. uh, read all about all the controversies in the Church of England where the government wants to introduce gay marriage, and it's happening across Europe, and it's even happening in Africa. Mm -hmm. I've written stories about Liberia and Uganda where church leaders are fighting against introduction of same-sex marriage. This is not just an American issue. This is a global issue. Uh, Australia's parliament voted down gay marriage last year. Well, I'm sure somebody's going to try to bring it back again this year. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that's not just happening here at home in the U.S. It's a worldwide phenomena, this collapse of what is truth. And it is the church's responsibility, I believe, and Kevin, I know you agree with me, it's the church's role to teach what is truth and to go back to the one source that really truly identifies what love is. <laughs> the creator. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, can't we let the, you know, the, the, the dude in the sky who created us define us? And he has done that. And we've been, so many places in the Bible we are defined. Uh, sin is defined. Jesus is defined. 
God is defined and our relationship with each other is defined. And I, far be it from you to, you know, to say that the, the, the church can't reestablish its foothold and take back and re help redefine what's been lost in 2012. Anglican Unscripted has a brand new sponsor this spring, and that's Anglican 1000. They're going to be bringing you a brand new church planting summit in 2013. It's going to be held March 4th through the 6th at Church of the Resurrection in Wheaton, Illinois. Please go to anglican1000.org, click on the event page, and you can sign up for the registration or read more about the plenary speakers. Um, on the story too, first guys, I, I need to thank you as you uh, may or may not have heard. I was having surgery last year and I asked you guys to pray and uh, obviously you did because I'm still here. Uh, they had some difficulty during the surgery. Uh, when you have a, a thyroid surgery, they start sticking things down your throat. And the first thing to do is intubate you and they were able to do that. But the more and more stuff, the fiber optics and all the tools they needed to stick down there, they lost my airway and uh, I started turning colors and everybody started to panic and uh, I don't know all the details but I know when I came to everybody in the room looked very relieved. <laughs> so your prayers and my prayers were answered. And uh, in my follow post-op the doctor says, Mr. Carlson, you have a thick neck and that means we can't stick a lot of stuff in there to do the surgery. You need to lose weight. Now how many times have you heard that before, George? You know, I just... Never, never, never. No, no, no. Just, uh, so I, my first prediction for 2013 is I will attempt to lose weight so I can have a successful thyroid surgery. That really doesn't seem a good motivation, though. <laughs> but that's my first prediction is Kevin will lose some weight, George. What's your first prediction? That Jack Iker is going to win his lawsuit in Fort Worth. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, legally there's going to be some big victories for the uh, uh, ACNA, uh, certainly with Fort Worth, uh, with the Texas case and with the Fort Worth case. Um, I think we're going to see San Juan and uh, San Joaquin and Quincy move mm -hmm. uh, forward significantly in this coming year. And I, I think the Texas Supreme Court decision in Fort Worth may come down in the summer and I think is going to be favorable based upon everything that I've read so far and sort of watching the videos of the presentation. It's a fool's game to bet on court outcomes, but I really do think that uh, Jack Eichers has the better legal team and the better legal arguments. So I think we're mm -hmm. going to look forward to that this year as a, one of the big stories, which is the destruction of Catherine Jefferson Shorey's legal strategy uh, against the conservatives. Fort Worth yeah, but, is going to be her Alamo. Right, but to pack up, like you said before, it's a fool's game to bet on this because We've always had the law on our side in every one of these cases, but you always get some judge or some legal strategy that 815 has been able to put in place that kicks this ball down the road or brings up some obscure law that nobody ever heard of before that was put back when there were, there were horses tied to, to street posts in the corner. And uh, so there's a lot of play, but I agree that um, from what we've read so far, um, there's going to be some victories uh, for the uh, Anglican Church in North America and the diocese that left the Episcopal Church. Um, but I wouldn't stretch that to South Carolina. I think yet. that is no. going to take years. The, whatever comes out in this coming year, whether we've got a, a, a situation I, where I would we have, have two dioceses or be, what? It, yeah, I'd have to agree because the reality is they've, the Supreme Court of South Carolina has made their decision. They know where they stand in corporations and hierarchical churches of which the Episcopal Church is not. So we'll have to see if they can really, uh, because they've already made these decisions, make it a quicker judgment. Uh, this is, was untested law in many other case, cases. Here it's been tested, maybe we can get it over with quicker. Um, ecumenical relations, George. Um, I saw a picture with the Archbishop of uh, the Anglican Church in North America, sh uh, shaking hands with the Pope. Uh, we've come a long way since Vatican too. Yes, we have indeed. I, I think that you're going to see groups like the Catholic Church and the Orthodox churches,
being a little bit pickier with who they are in ecumenical dialogue with. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's very, it's nice and sweet to have a ecumenical dialogue with the Episcopal Church or with the Church of England, but when you don't really agree upon anything, even to the point where you don't believe in the same right and wrong, it's sort of a pointless strategy. So I think we're going, we've certainly seen this with Metropolitan Hilaria and the Russian Orthodox Church mm -hmm. has been reaching out to the ACNA and to conservative Episcopalians. I think we're going to see a repeat of what Cardinal Ratzinger did in 2003, which is when he gave a letter to the Plano Conference of conservative Episcopalians. I think we're going to see the next phase of that in 2013. I agree. I think that uh, people are in for some very surprising news between the Anglican Church in North America and the Roman Catholic Church. I say no more about that. Uh, now, things will probably go pretty good church-wise. Let's move on to what happens in the world. You and I have, for the last couple of years, been following the story of uh, the what we call the Arab Spring. And uh, it started out good, looked great. The people stood up, they fought, they had rebellion, they had revolution. And they had what we, as Westerners, understand is democracy. They had elections. Yay! Well, that hasn't gone so well. Uh, Egypt is going through a horrible struggle uh, where they now have a dictator again. Um, Iran has remained unchanged because there was no reaction to the Green Revolution. Uh, Syria is in a civil war, um, likely to go on for years after losing almost 50,000 people. Uh, Turkey, not very much better, uh, still peace going on, but they're starting a, a small war now with Syria. Um, the Sudan, I mean, all these places are a mess in the place where we don't want a mess right now because Israel is amongst, amongst them, George. Yeah, this is a time when we really need to play for, uh, pray for Bishop Munir and Nice and the Christians of Egypt and the Christians of the whole Middle East. Mm -hmm. Because it's more likely than not that Egypt will go the way of Iran, of the Islamist, uh, what we would call extremists, for them that's mainstream, mm -hmm. seizing power and turning Iran into an Islam, uh, Egypt into Islamic theocracy. There's very little to prevent that from happening. And we could see Egypt and Tunisia and Algeria and Syria and Iraq all following Iran in becoming very hostile Islamist regimes, hostile to their native Christian populations and hostile to the wider Western world. Yeah, and I have to say it's not just going to be the, the Middle East. We've seen this play out in Nigeria um, with the, the Boko Haram, and we've seen this play out uh, a little bit in Uganda and other places. Right now, currently this month, it's really playing out in Tanzania and Zanzibar. And the news I'm getting from Zanzibar is I would predict the government there will fall uh, or there will be some type of uh, Muslim conflict or civil war there very soon because they've had sparks of a civil war for the last four or five months. And I don't think they're going to be, stand as a nation too much longer, George. Yes, Tang Tanganyika, the mainland, and Zanzibar, the island, have formed the Republic of Tanzania. But Tanganyika is mostly Christian and Zanzibar is 90% Muslim. And those Muslims have fallen under the sway of the uh, radical Islam. And I think we're going to see civil war in Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. in, and we're going to see an outbreak of the civil war in Sudan. It's going to get worse again because, the, you know, for years, uh, international pressure was put on the Sudanese regime not to kill people in Darfur and the Nuba Mountains. Nobody's looking anymore. And so guess what they've been doing for the past few months? They've been bombing the Christians and attacking uh, the tribes who are along the border region, trying to drive them out or to convert them to Islam. Sudan is going to turn bloody again. Yeah, and which is sad. Uh, so we got some good predictions, we got some okay predictions, and we got some bad predictions. Now, your role in this is, as uh, Anglican Unscripted viewers is to pray for these situations. Um, we're coming up on a brand new year. This is January 1st. George and I have broken ourselves away from our family, sat in front of our webcams to bring you the news. And, um, you know, 2013 isn't about watching what happens. It's about being a participant in what happens. And a lot of that happens when you're on your knees.
Okay, George, let's move on to our closing. People are going, wait, 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 you guys know we have five stories. Well, like we told you, nothing happened this week. In fact, the only thing that really happened this week is somebody recorded a show called Anglican Unscripted. That's how slow the week was. So we got to make up our own stories. Let's do a closing, George. George, how was your holidays? You had oh, a, a wonderful it Christmas? It was wonderful. It was wonderful uh -huh. at the church. It was wonderful at the house. But, you know, Kevin, it really was rotten for me and my checkbook. Uh -oh. Spent all this money buying presents for my children, and wouldn't you know, they got they got a gift from a friend of the family that they think uh -huh. is wonderful. And they've been playing with constantly. It's laptop computer, and uh -huh. this animal walked into the church on uh, Christmas Eve, and uh, the girl said, "Oh, daddy, daddy, we have to have a cat. We have to have a cat." And so we have a cat, and we named it Ron because there are these little things back there. And then we took it to the uh, veterinarian, and he said, uh, those aren't what you think they are, and she's not a Ron, and so we've renamed her Veronica. So as, as an Episcopal priest, you can admit to having gender identity yes, identification issues. Yes, at the issues. household and at the Church of the Redeemer in Avon Park, Florida, we had issues of gender identity. And that's now been resolved, but... Life is wonderful at the Conger House. The cat's on the desk. The dog is under my feet. The children are out driving around in the car. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Typical day. Yeah, I'm down here at Anglican TV Studios. We're back at the house. Uh, we had a, a Christmas. Uh, we There's an annual uh, uh, Christmas party uh, where we have invite people to a cooker party. And if you notice, I'm having trouble speaking. It's because I'm coming off a sugar high of which is unrecordable. We had 51 people at our house, uh, every room, the living room, dining room, kitchen were full that's of people. more people than were the average Episcopal church on Christmas, but <laughs> I know, let's not say that. All right, whatever. And they're all eating cookies, getting sugar high, drinking uh, eggnog, and having a grand old time, and it's an annual party that, that we have. Um, the thing is, the Coulsons want to present a house that's clean, now, our house is not always clean, so there's a 10-day routine where we, which we clean every room, and I repainted the family room, and I, you know, I'm having trouble painting and edging. You know, I'm taking Motrin because I'm just not as young as I used to be, George. The whole body was falling apart. Finally, the party arrives, and the five Colsons are too tired to entertain. That's <laughs> why, that's why the, the cookies and the nutmeg do, do its own job. So that's, that's a lot of fun we had. Um, on to what else was I going to talk about? Oh, fundraising. It's not too late to pledge. Pl pledge. It is too late to pledge. It's not too late to pledge for 2013. Uh, pledge campaign is doing really well. George and I will eventually get a letter out there to you uh, asking for a pledge. But uh, if you go to anglican.tv forward slash donate, you can pledge for, for amount for the year. Uh, for what you want to uh, to give us, because it's easier to have a budget than for us to beg for each event. Um, big events this year, hopefully, we don't know for certain, we'll be traveling to a GAFCON event. Uh, we've heard rumors, we've heard not rumors, who knows? If there's GAFCON, George and I want to be there. And I'll be traveling to lots of different events throughout the year, uh, domestically and internationally. It'll be a fun year to be an Anglican. I may even go to London to record a new installation of an Archbishop uh, of Canterbury. Be my first one. It would be fun, but you know, it's a hot ticket. I don't know if they'll let us come. Well, you're kidding. No, I mean, you know, they actually may fill the cathedral for once that Sunday. <laughs> oh, jeez. We'll see. <laughs> I'm Kevin Paulson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 61 of Anglican on Screen. <laughs>
<laughs> really? Is that what you're saying? You don't want a you want a short bad show, not a long bad well, show. Well, I don't think we're going to be bad, but I'd rather uh, just pick and choose and just give the best rather than yeah. try to fill out time. Sure. Yeah, we're not we're not here to 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 buffer time. We're here to keep people interested in what we talk about. We just they're just, our audience is just lucky. We're so good looking. That's and, all. Yeah. And I don't want to jinx things, but uh, I think the last three or four shows we've had to record the second day in a row because of <laughs> some silly mistake I've made, or or, or me something. too. It's just the way it works. But I like now that we have our office. We got everything. You know, everything is when you keep things consistent. The chances of things going wrong are, are less and less. So. Uh, three, two, one.